Like grandma's signature platter or just plain old refried beans, we return with a review that focuses on the extra spices woven together to make classic games great again. This look at remasters will bring back memories of old and grace them with the loving care resolution boosts or texture and lighting detail. So for all of you who believe that one good turn deserves another, here's your look at the first 10 in our PS4 remastered reviews. Bon appetit. We return with the remasters on PS4. This is our first edition of going over these types of titles. I thought I would start with Borderlands, the Handsome Collection. This is rated M for Mature by 2K and includes the Borderlands pre-sequel and Borderlands 2. I, I'm a bit discouraged that they did not include Borderlands 1, but I do have it on PS3, so no huge loss there, I guess. I would have just liked it remastered as well with this set. Um, however, this is rated M for blood and gore, intense violence, language, sexual themes, and use of alcohol. But this does include all the add-on and bonus content for both of these games. This is what you're going to get when you open it up and look at it on the inside. Let's get started on these games. I've been trying to think, what's more handsome than myself? And that's when I stumbled across Borderlands on PS4. Both the pre-sequel and part two can be found here, along with all their DLC. The game comes standard with 1080p resolution, and you'll get game saves and character type carryover support for your PS3 ventures. So get a crack a and get your copy today. Not advertising for the game, just don't be stupid. Pick it up sometime. You know guys, I just love it when they make a triple threat here and put all three amazing games onto one disc. And that's what we get here with the Bioshock Collection by 2K. It is rated M for Mature. As you can see, it's depictions of all of the types of games that you'll play on each Bioshock. It was right on the cover, which I thought was a really cool idea. Um, on the back, it's presented very nicely and has all the artwork for the first, second, and third game there. Um, this is rated M for many things. Blood and gore, drug reference, intense violence, sexual themes, strong language use of alcohol and tobacco. And if we open it up, we can see that it is upside down, and I hate when that happens, but uh, I always turn them back around, kind of anal that way, I guess. But hey, Bioshock is too cool not to turn back around. So look at this. We got two discs here. Very cool. They've, they, you know, they've given its due diligence to putting in, um, putting these games on two different discs, so you won't have just one disc full of you know, crappy resolution and not enough space for both games. They actually did it right and put it on two discs for you. So very happy that they did. It does come with this little pamphlet here. Let's get right on to Bioshock for you. Welcome to Rapture times three in this stunning set. I've been a long time fan of the Bioshock series and I love how it mirrors the atmosphere of Fallout. Not only the 1080p jump and 60 frames per second, but having the ability to unlock the imagining Bioshock audio commentary gives me ample incentive to explore these worlds even more. Bioshock 1 is truly the showstopper and has some fun extras like viewing the creatures that didn't quite make it into the game in a certain area. Part 2 has been cleaned up considerably enough to avoid looking extremely dated, and then with 3, my personal favorite, it holds nothing back with the smoothness that shouts look at me from the rooftops. I guess what I'm trying to say is buy this collection and watch the nostalgia fly. G1 Toys approves this message. And next we bring to you a game that I put entirely too many hours into playing multiple campaigns and just blasting my way through this game was a riot and I had a great time. This is Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition. It's by People Can Fly and Gearbox and is rated M for Mature. As you can see on the back, has some really cool cartoonish looking art and is rated M for Blood and Gore, Intense Violence, Partial Nudity, Sexual Themes, Strong Language, and Use of Alcohol, all wrapped up into one goodie of a game. And this is what you get when you open it up. Uh, you can play as Duke Nukem in this version and hear the commentary from him as well throughout the game. And let's get right into this one. I know, I know. How can this painfully bloody and gory action-packed kill up possibly be fun and popular again with a new coat of paint? Well, try ad-libbing some Duke Nukem through the campaign on a DLC and maybe we have something. No, really, that's what they did. And to be honest, I sort of enjoyed the main player's commentary better the first time around. Voiceovers aside, I had a literal blast as I pummeled my way through the 4 to 5 hour campaign again. Overall, the 60 FPS did the smoothness of flow wonders and only had a few noticeable hiccups. I do wish they would have chosen to incorporate some new stages or kill styles, but I can't complain about a leash slinging throwback to the game that raised ESRB's eyebrows.
And why not revisit a game such as this one? This is Deception for the Nightmare Princess. And as you can see, it has some pretty erotic, uh, cartoonish cover art there on the front. I really dig it, though. I love that style. It is by Tecmo and is rated M for Mature. Um, as you can see on the back, it does uh, have some nice presentation there as well. And then is rated M for blood, sexual themes, and some violence. Uh, if we open it up, that's what we get on the inside. And we're going to get right into this one and give you the scoop. I will defend the statement to this day that Deception Blood Ties is a hidden gem not only on PS3, but also here remastered, redone, and retweaked with the Nightmare Princess. The only way to describe it is like a strategic self-defense with a little over-the-top gore to raise a chuckle. It's a game for which I've not seen the likes of and may turn some action-starved players away, but some puzzling fans may find solace in its twisted methodical overtones. This game is chocked full of content between the two modes in which you control the two devilish daughters and provides hours of frame rate adjusted fun, with a slight resolution jump. A remake such as this might have gained some more favor among fans if they would have incorporated a graphics overhaul or better camera angles. I feel that knowing the PS4 was more than capable of these changes that the developers could have truly made a memorable rerun. Re but the fans who played Blood Ties will definitely notice some TLC with no DLC to worry about and plenty of BOT. I'll let you figure that one out. And next, I just had to go there with this game. This is Dragon's Crown Pro Battle Hardened Edition by Atlas. Um, and this game um, is one of my favorite on PS3, so I had to see what they would do with it on PS4. So I did pick it up uh, to show all of you. This is the special edition rated T. Um, it does include some uh, skill cards right down here, as you can see. It's what they look like. Um, I haven't opened these ones yet, so that's why I'm showing you the picture because I just didn't, I couldn't bring myself to opening it yet. But uh, you know, this is going to be, I think, a, a game that will become rare in the future a bit. It is an Atlas title, and usually they have lower print runs. Um, it is rated T for blood and gore, partial nudity, suggestive themes, use of alcohol and tobacco, and some violence. But that is the presentation, which is just fabulous on the back, fabulous on the front, and is beveled so you can actually feel it. It's really cool. It sticks out there, as you can see. Um, we're going to open this up to show you what you get. It has a little slip cover there, but that is your artwork. It looks fantastic, beautiful on the back. It's also beautiful, as you can see, the uh, glossy dragon there, and it's just looking fantastic. Love the way the art looks on this game. This is the Steelbook Edition. There's those skill cards I was telling you about that I will not open, <laughs> not yet at least. Um, it does have a little insert in there that we can just take out to look at the uh, inside with there. And that's what you get, basically. Underneath, uh, you do have a little bit more artwork. This is the, the load screen that they've kind of incorporated into the background there of the back of the disc. So, guys, a really cool presentation. Um, definitely, if you're a collector, this is definitely one to own. Uh, this version of this game, at least, is the one to own because the case is just so cool. So let's get right into Dragon's Crown Pro. Speaking of BOT, we stride in with another remake to a game I hold dear on PS3. Hand-drawn action RPG Golden Axe Simulator Dragon's Crown is back, and I'm here to advise you whether or not to immerse yourself once again. Basically, you are going from HD to 4K, so all you purists out there with extra cash stowed away for gaming like myself will find some merit in a repurchase, but if you can appreciate the core mechanics and gameplay, the PS3 version may be enough. The good thing about it is it still provides compatibility across consoles. Also, a newly orchestrated soundtrack may serve the finicky who enjoy a premium sound and backing track. So all things considered, Pro is the way to go if you are jonesing for another amazing visual run through and your eyes have gotten worse over the course of about four years. Otherwise, it's not recommended for the faint of cash, so save your bank accounts for the next blockbuster and you'll probably feel better you did. And next we bring to you Fairy Fencer F, Advent Dark Force. This one is by Idea Factory, rated T14, and has some really cool looking anime art on the front. They did a really good job, and I'm kind of a fan of that style anyway, but really nice presentation front and back. As you can see, it looks really, really nice. It is rated T4, blood, fantasy violence, language, partial nudity, sexual themes, and use of alcohol. And if we open it up, as you can see, there's some really cool artwork on the inside as well. Um, if we take this uh, disc off, you can see that there's some reversible cover art. So that's always nice when they throw that little extra in for you, and I really do appreciate that. So let's get right on into uh, Fairy Fencer. Never thought I would revisit this JRPG on my PS4 console, but lo and behold, here I am 
and I'm very elated to let you all know it's a masterpiece. I thought PS3's version was quite good, and this one does include crossover compatibility, but as I have matured and replayed this version, I've been given everything I need to say. It's actually great now. With quite a few more character story arcs and options, it feels like it has dipped itself into multiple RPG styles like Mugen Soul Z, Hyper Dimension Neptunia, or The Legend of Dragoon. Frame rates and graphical upgrades are noticeable, but still have some snags along the way. For the 40 hours plus you'll play this, I decree a fun factor score of 8.5 out of 10, but maybe a more suitable name like Fury Fencer may have suited this title better, if you happen to be homophobic, that is. And what would a remaster be without the game that has raised everyone's awareness of Naughty Dog? This is The Last of Us Remastered, with over 200 Game of the Year awards, rated M for Mature and only on PlayStation. As you can see, this is what you will get with the game and the cover art, and is rated M for Blood and Gore, Intense Violence, Sexual Themes, Strong Language, and Use of Alcohol. Uh, this one's a very popular game. Um, as you can see on the inside, they did some little bit of cover art underneath the disc, as you can see there. Uh, but really nothing to flip around unless you really uh, really like this scene, I guess. But uh, wow, guys, this game has just really been on everyone's radar to pick up. And the remastered version is done very well. So let's just get right into this. Is this PS4 rendition everything we hoped for? Well, it is a pretty darn good attempt. No extra content, but at 60 frames per second as opposed to 30, we have a smoother story experience. Also, some changes for the better are seen with the controller setup. It does also include the Left Behind DLC, and rightfully so. I was never really a fan of rummaging, unless it's Fallout of course, but the deep story here and team player attitude of the group brings life to a world of death. This is an oldie but goodie and paves the way for part two to carry the torch of its zombie infested predecessor. And here we are gazing upon Okami HD. I am so happy that they decided to remake this once again, and I have it on PS4 now, and I'm very elated that I do. This is by Capcom, rated T14, and as you can see, is presented nicely as well. On the back, it looks really good. On the front, it looks really good. It is rated T for suggestive themes, blood and gore, partial nudity, fantasy violence, crude humor, and use of alcohol and tobacco. And on the inside, that's what you get. Um, on this one, it's pretty plain looking actually on the inside, but I do like the cover art here. It uh, really makes it pop. So let's talk about Okami. This time, they barked up the right tree with Okami HD. It's not often that we get a PS2 exclusive ramped up through two generations of consoles. Of course, we get 4K resolution here with a beautiful watercolor feel. This is the gravy train of Japanese art with a wolf who incites anime fans to cheer. Okami is inspired by Zelda-like gameplay and shows through its adventure setting. It will have you seeking shelter and settling in for the evening to give it some well-deserved time. And our newest remastered game we bring to you next is Red Faction Gorilla. This is the remastered edition and is by THQ Nordic and Volition Games, rated M4 Mature. And I really like the way they made Mason look on the cover of this, like he's coming at you, uh, ready to take down your house like the big bad wolf, you know. It's pretty cool looking, uh, uh, intense looking cover art there. On the back, it's, uh, you know, generally plain, I think, for the most part. The cover on the front does, definitely doesn't more justice, but it is rated M4 Blood, Strong Language, and Violence. And, you know, I think this is one of the games that you get that you uh, can kind of like in a PG-13 movie to uh, that they rate R. So it's kind of one of those games I, I do recommend for anyone. There's a couple F-bombs here and there, but for the most part, this game is pretty tame uh, according to, you know, other, other games of this, of this genre. Uh, and I do recommend it for just about everyone. So I have some things and concerns to say about this. Let's get right into it. I was overjoyed when I heard they took one of my favorite PS3 games and remastered it. Upon getting and playing it, I was zapped back to 2009 when it first arrived to the PS3 console. Wherein lies the problem this time? It's not about nostalgia here. Don't get me wrong, I think nine years is a good block of time, but I wanted substantial change. I wanted to see the Mars environment like never before while playing an almost classic. First off, the Geomod engine used for the icing, which is the destruction in this game, still holds up as one of the best to date. When you get into the graphics, which I know everyone out there must be excited for, you get some improved shading, 4K, and more shadowing with post-processing. Also, 60 frames per second on PS4 does elevate the overall experience, but I'll admit it, I'm a picky fool for noticeable improvement, 
and if you're looking for a new game, you'll be very disappointed. That said, the game is still one of the best of its kind, being open world, action packed, and a smooth runner, so I recommend it to anyone who hasn't played it, to get this version. But beware, all you veterans of Red Faction, you may be apt to say this is just a big old Remars turd attempt at what you hold dear. And again, only on PlayStation, we bring to you another exclusive that is just amazing. This is Shadow of the Colossus, and as you can see on the cover, it looks very nice. Rated T14, of course, and this one is by Bluepoint and Sony. And this has a really cool presentation on the front and the back, as you can see there. It's rated T for Blood and Violence. I do recommend this game for anyone. It's stellar. Um, if we open it up, you can see the cover art. There's not much going on there, but still pretty cool uh, nonetheless. But let's get right into our last game of the evening and let you know how this turned out. Through the jaw-dropping campaign of the 2005 PS2 days to the graphics-driven market of the current PS4, we come to a stunning conclusion for this title. I was looking for the detail where it needed to be for the second remake, and I received exactly that, with amazing shadowing spice and exquisite lighting dressing, which is what a game focused on mood should have in the way of ingredients. Don't forget new textures, animation, and 60 frames per second at 1080p if you have the PS4 Pro. I love the simple yet effective premise of grabbing a sword and literally heading off into the sunset or sunrise, and letting that be your guide to the next challenge. It is simplistically invigorating. The game really is a masterpiece in so many subtle ways. I think if you're a fan of the original, this begs a playthrough of the 16 Colossi once again, and you can skip the PS3 version and go right to the meat here. I want to thank you all for watching, subscribing, or commenting on what I have made a hobby on my channel of reviewing great or not so great titles. I keep thinking to myself, I was going to play it anyway, why not review it for all of you also? And that's what I do. It's been an experience, and a new road traveled for me personally. Keep watching, and I'll keep throwing something new into the mix. This is G1 Toys saying, break free from the shadows and go toward the light.